Hey guys, this is Cupcake, and for this tutorial video, we are going to be building a Spectre Heavy VTOL gunship. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, this is one right here doing what it does best. For the purposes of this uh, tutorial, we are going to be building a civilian version of the Spectre. Um, the reason for that is I kind of just want to cover the basics of the craft design and go over one of three techniques that I use for constructing my ships. Now this first technique that I'm going to show you guys was used in the Carpathia and going back a bit further the Barracuda. Anyway without further ado let's get into it. Okay so to start off with we're just going to set the root part which is a Mark II fuselage with oxidizer. Now as we go along you're going to notice that I keep uh, saving the craft file as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Um, it's just a good habit to get into with any design software. It means worst comes to worst if the file gets corrupted or if you make a mistake with the design you can just revert to an earlier version and not lose too much time and energy. Anyway let's get stuck in. So we've just turned the fuselage round and the other main parts that make up the Spectre are a pair of T800 tanks. Now you'll see we kind of want them in the middle, but that's easier said than done. However, if we flip the fuselage over and we reattach the T-800 tanks, they are perfectly in the middle, which is exactly where we want them. You'll also notice that I've got uh, snapping enabled and uh, you can leave this on for the whole build. We're just gonna come back to the T-800 tanks. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just mount the engines. So we're going to use a pair of small cubic octagonal struts onto which we're going to mount some jet engines and a pair of LV-909s. Now if you're having trouble getting both sets of engines on don't be too concerned at this stage, we only really need them on one side. As you can see you may have to move that engine backwards and forwards a few times until it becomes green. By holding down the center mouse button you can zoom in and grab the cubic octagonal strut and then by pressing X we can enable symmetry and mount both pairs of engines. Now we want the black and yellow strip from the LV-909s to be about level with the hull. Now we can go back and just pick out the T-800 tanks and we just want to rotate them so they're recessed inside the hull. Again, you don't have to be too concerned about symmetry at this stage, doing it on one side is fine. We can now attach the Mark II to Mark I adapters. Now if like here you're having trouble um, attaching them then just get rid of the engines. We just want to rotate that part so the black strip is just above the hull. Now for anyone that doesn't know parts can be rotated by holding down shift and using the WASD keys. By holding down the ALT key you can also attach the part straight to the attachment point rather than surface mounting it. Now we can grab the T-800 tank and just move both sides into position along the main spar. We want to position these tanks just above the edge of the Mark II fuselage. With that done we've got the basic hull design sorted and we can start adding the other components. Before we do this just take off the Mark II to Mark I adapters, we're going to reattach them later. It's now time to mount the landing gear and air intakes, both of which we're going to put on a cubic octagonal strut. Now we just want to extend the landing leg out so we can see how it's going to sit and we also want to lock the suspension. It's also worth angling the landing legs down so we can have a nice tall payload underneath the craft. It's now time to attach the intakes which will also hide the landing gear. Using the right mouse button again we can zoom in and just get those items mounted on both sides. Getting them centered can be a bit awkward, uh, we can make life easier though by just rotating the whole craft 90 degrees and mounting these items on the top. Once you've done that, rotate the craft 180 degrees and just repeat the process for the other set of legs. I 
At the moment we've got a perfectly balanced symmetrical design which we are now going to ruin by adding a capsule. To do that we're just going to use a cubic slot again and just rotate it so it sits inside the hull. This will be our mounting point for the cockpit. As soon as we mount the cockpit we want to drain all the RCS fuel for reasons that will become clear later on. By grabbing the cubic stop we can get the cockpit into position so it's just above the hull. Unlike in this uh, footage though you want the cockpit on the mounting point closest to you, sorry about that. Now is as good a time as any to position the ladder so your Kerbal can get in and out. And we just want to rotate that up a bit so it's not pointing vertically downwards. We also want to position a docking port at the front uh, just to hide the edge of the cockpit and that cubic start and in military variants this docking port actually serves as the targeting system. Now things mounted on cubic struts can be a bit on the wobbly side so we're just going to brace the cockpit by running some struts to it. At this point we can reattach the engines, in order to do it here I briefly had to use debug menu clipping and you may have to do the same. Now I realise we're building a civilian ship but uh, I still want to mount a couple of hard points in the hope that the docking cam mod one day gets fixed and I can use it to fire missiles again. Now since we've mounted the cockpit all of the weight has now shifted towards the front of the craft. In order to counterbalance that we are going to be using four reaction wheels. You'll notice I'm mounting the reaction wheels at a slight angle. The reason for this is it just looks better. I'm not quite sure where the balance point is at this stage uh, so I'm just going to have an educated guess. With the reaction wheels fitted we can just take the craft out from the initial test flight and just see how she does. As I take off you'll notice I've got the SAS disabled, this is so I can just roughly check the balance point. Uh, as we can see here we've still got a bit too much weight towards the nose so those reaction wheels are going to have to come back. Now the purpose of this initial test flight is just really to go over the basics, you know, to make sure the engine's working, the landing gear's functioning okay, stuff like that. It's also a good time to just check the ladder and make sure your Kerbal can actually get in and out of the craft. Now with all my designs we've got uh, VTOL or horizontal control via the cockpit and we've also got vertical axis control via a docking port. Now the vertical axis control functions like a rocket, it runs in line with the engines and we need this to do burns with the navball. Now this docking port isn't going to be perfectly centred so in order to discourage people from mounting things on it we're just going to recess it inside the hull because it's purely for navigation. Now it's critical that the stocking port is perfectly in line with the engine so we're just going to use an I-beam to make sure it's sitting nice and straight. 
With that done, we can get on to the most critical part of the build process, which is balancing. Now when we did our initial test flight, the craft was still a little nose heavy. So we're just going to get those reaction wheels, bring them back and see if that helps the balance. Now for any joystick users out there, I actually recommend disconnecting the joystick and restarting KSP for this next part of the process. I also recommend installing HypeEdit, a link to which can be found in the description. Now using HypeEdit, we're just going to launch the craft into orbit, which is the best place to test the balance as we don't have to worry about atmospheric drag. Now once in orbit, we're just going to use Time Warp to make sure the craft is sitting perfectly still. With that done, I'm going to fire up the rocket engines and we'll see which way the craft moves. Now as you can see, there's still too much weight on the nose, so we're going to bring those reaction wheels further back in the space plane hangar. Ideally when you're doing balancing like this, you want some sort of visual guide. So we can actually use the lettering on the side of the reaction wheel where it fits into the hull. So just to reiterate, this is uh, without any control input or SAS. This is just the craft with the engines going. Now, as you can see, the craft is almost balanced. I'm a real perfectionist when it comes to balancing my craft, so um, I'm going to tweak it a tiny bit further. But if these are the results you're getting, then it's good enough, really. You're never going to get it 100% perfect, but you can get it close. Hopefully this will give you guys an indication of how sensitive the balance on VTOLs can be. And uh, you may have noticed I had to move those reaction wheels just a tiny, tiny amount to get the balance set. Anyway, I think we are just about there. There's a small bass towards the nose, but nothing too major. So you remember earlier where we drained the RCS fuel from the cockpit? Well, this is the reason. We want all the consumables, anything that's going to change the mass of the craft to be along that balance point. In order to be on that balance point, it's going to have to be mounted symmetrically, just like we did with the engines and the T-800 tanks. With the craft balance, we can start adding the final components and details that will make up the finished craft. Now what I'm doing here is just adding a pair of docking ports, which we can use to add drop tanks or other cargo to the craft. I'm using an Oscar B fuel tank just so it matches the general aesthetic of the craft. Just when you mount them, make sure you've got it on the right side of the attachment point for the strut, otherwise you can get some weird clipping issues. We can now reattach the Mark II to Mark I adapters. Now as we mount the second adapter, we want to make sure that it attaches to the T-800 tank and not to the first adapter. If it does attach to the first adapter, then the fuel is going to flow forward and it's not going to do the balance any favours. Fortunately, there's a couple of techniques we can use to just make sure that uh, those tanks are mounted properly.
It can be a bit awkward, but if you move your mouse to a certain point, the part is going to jump forwards and backwards slightly. We want there to be a tiny, tiny gap in between the two adapters. If we've got that, then we know that the um, tank is sitting properly. We can double check by just removing the first tank, and if it comes off without taking the second tank with it, then we know it's sitting perfectly. Another way to get around this issue is actually to block off the attachment point on the first adapter. So to do this, you just need to put the part in there, and so the second adapter can't attach to it. Once you've got that second adapter in place, just zoom in and remove the part. We just want to grab the T800 tanks again and just mount them symmetrically on both sides. You can also save the T800 tanks as a sub-assembly and use them to make maybe RCS or cargo bay variants of the design. The next stage is just to get the plumbing done and run the fuel lines. I'm not a big fan of the way the fuel lines look in KSP, so where possible I try to hide them. We also want to run a second pair of fuel lines from the Oscar B tank to the Mark II fuselage, as this will allow fuel to come through from the drop tanks. Now for this next stage of the design, we're just going to work on the electrics and add solar panels and batteries. To get the solar panels nice and straight, I'm just going to mount them in that tiny, tiny gap in between the adapters. Like the fuel lines, I think solar panels can be quite ugly if they're mounted straight on the hull, so I'm just going to try and recess them slightly and try and get them looking a bit better. Now, unless you're making an iron-powered craft, you really don't need to go too crazy with solar panels. A pair on the top and a pair on the bottom is more than enough. We also need to add some batteries for electrical storage, and the small batteries are also nice for just adding a bit of detail to the craft. I did show some footage of me adding the lights and RCS tanks, but that's perhaps going into too much detail. Likewise, with the action groups, you guys just set them up however you see fit. Anyway, I think it's about time we take her out for a bit of a spin. So with this final test flight, we just want to go over each of the systems one by one and make sure that everything is functioning as it should be. So I'm just having a look at the drop tank here and just making sure that it's feeding properly. Um, if there's a problem with the fuel feeding, generally you can uh, feel it after a while. You'll notice the handling gets a bit strange on the path and it starts listing to one side. I've also mapped the drop tanks to be released with the abort key, so we're just going to test that now. And I missed. Oh dear. I'm also going to double check that the solar panels are generating power and that the Mark II to Mark I adapters are mounted properly. So 
So with all the systems in place we can just go for a bit of a spin and just enjoy the craft. This technique that I've showed you this tutorial has a lot of good things going for it. It's easy to do and you can make some good looking solid designs. The drawbacks are it's not sub-assembly compatible and you haven't got like a central point that you can mount cargo. Although saying that there is the new Mark II Clambotron which does alleviate the problem somewhat. In order to get a bit of variety, um, the next tutorial video will be a piloting one which will cover SSTOs. I'm thinking at this stage we're going to take a scythe and fly it to Minmus and back. Anyway guys, I hope this made uh, sense. If you have any questions, just hit me up on the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I've also provided a link in the description to the finished craft file, as well as the various uh, development stages that I went through while creating it. Oh dear. Well, I think we'd best leave it there. Bye for now.